Hello, myself Sivashekar Eremalai, a partner solutions architect here at AWS, specifically focused on the Microsoft workloads. In this short video, we are going to see about how AWS app to container helps you to containerize and migrate your existing application. To understand a bit more on containerization, it's a multi-step process. First, understand the application, like what are the dependencies and what are the third-party components in my application. And second is the container building, like you need to create a Docker file and build the image and upload it. And third is the CI-CD process, like how I'm going to deploy the containers continuously you know, with via some automation and last is the deployment infrastructure ECS, EKS and the VPC security network auto scaling you have to plan for all these let's see how app to container solves most of the issues what we just discussed AWS app to container is a command line tool for migrating and modernizing .NET web applications into container format AWS app to container analyzes and builds an inventory of applications running in bare metal, virtual machines, Elastic Compute Cloud instances are in the cloud. So what are the benefits of AWS app to container? It legacy app containerization with minimal efforts and containerization at scale, best practices for containerization and opinionated AWS deployment artifacts. How AWS app to container works? First, it discovers the application that is running and then it analyzes the application and extract the components that are required for the application to run and containerizes the component. And finally, it creates the deployment artifacts. And if you want to use that to configure in your CI CD pipeline, then you can leverage it or you can directly want AWS app to container to deploy that to AWS, it does so. So that's how AWS app to container works. So here is a quick architecture to show you what can be the source and target with AWS app to container, like where can my source application sit in and what are the targets that AWS app to container supports like Amazon ECS, EKS, App Runner, and you can store the images to Amazon ECR as well. And it supports both the Java and the .NET workloads. For example, if you have your legacy application that is .NET Framework 4.5 hosted in Microsoft IIS, then you can leverage AWS app to container to deploy that to Amazon ECS or EKS depends on the use case. And it supports the Java applications as well. Let's see a quick demo on how AWS app to container works. For this demo, I have used two machines. So one is the source machine where my actual application is running. And another one is my worker machine where I'm actually installing the AWS app to container and containerizing it and deploying the artifacts to AWS cloud. So let's take a look at my source server. As you could see in the screen, so this is my source server and I have my sample application that is .NET New, which is a .NET framework based application, which is running in the IIS. And I have enabled Windows Remote Management Protocol so that my worker machine can communicate with my source machine. So it is very good architecture for you to work with a source machine and do all the operations in a worker machine as you can scale it for multiple source servers when you actually work in a worker machine rather than directly working in an source machine. So this is my worker machine where I have actually installed AWS app to container and I have enabled relevant protocol for my worker machine to communicate with source server. So, so I'm going to start interacting with app to container tool with the help of command sets. First thing I'm going to do is like initialize the app to container. Let's type in the command of app to container init. Just for simplicity, I have noted down the commands here. So first thing, we are going to configure the app to container. So it is using a default workspace where it will actually store the artifacts, whatever that is being generated throughout the process. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. And it is it requires relevant privileges to run app to container. So I am using the default instance profile here. I'm just going to say why and the default region asking me for a S3 bucket where you want to store the artifacts. So I'm just going to configure the S3 bucket, whatever I have created. 
So do you want agree to report the metrics? I'm going to say yes. Do you want to upload the logs? I'm going to say yes. Do you want to sign the images? I'm going to say no. So with this, the initialization is complete. Now we are going to set it for remote configure. Basically, it is going to consume the machine, the source machine here. So I'm going to configure the remote here. So I have used the private IP of my source machine as a target here. So I'm just going to give like a couple of seconds for it to generate the inventory out of it so that it will list down the, what are the applications that are running in your source server. Let's come back once the inventory command has been executed successfully. As you could see now, inventory command has been executed successfully and I'm going to show, it to you, show you how the inventory.json looks like and what it contains. So as you could see here, my source server has two applications that are running in my IIS and DNN is the sample application what I'm going to containerize now. So I'm just making a note of this application ID. So once this inventory has analyzed, so I'm going to perform a deep analysis on my application. So I'm just going to run that particular command. So as you could see here, so I'm instructing the app to container to remotely analyze the application ID of my source and it is sitting in my source server which is like 10.0.1.104 so what happens in this stage the tool performs deep analysis on the application whatever you are requesting here and it will list down what are the network ports that needs to be open what is the framework that is required and all those information it provides you so let's give about a few seconds for this tool to complete the analysis and let's come back once it is complete. Okay, now that the analysis is complete, I'm going to show it to you how analysis.json looks like. For that, I'm copying the path where my analysis.json sits in and I'm opening up the file explorer. And here is the analysis.json file. So as you could see here, it doesn't have a container base image. So we are going to configure it and it has two sections. One is the editable and the non-editable section. Like the application is running on port 80. So it is going to run again on the port 80. So I'm going to give a container base image here. So for this, I have used 2012 server as my base source server. So I'm going to upgrade it to 2019 during the containerization process. So I'm going to give the source base image of 2019. So in addition to containerizing your application, so AWS app to container will also help you to actually upgrade your operating system. And then once this analysis is complete, I'm going to remotely extract the application components like it is going to create a zip of the executables in the source server. I'm just going to run that command. And what happens in this step is it's going to the source server and it is getting you the executable files and creating a zip out of it. And that zip will be copied over to the remote server, basically the worker machine here. Okay, now the extraction is complete. I'm going, so next I'm going to run the containerize command basically to create the images out of it. And during this page, using the Docker file that has been generated by the tool, a container image has been created. And I'm going to show you in my local Docker how the image looks like. And then we will check what are the components that are being generated out of it. So it's going to take about a few minutes based on the application size. And OK, now the containerization stage is complete. So as a next step, I'm going to generate the deployment files. So for that, I'm copying the command here and going to run it. So, so I'm not going to actually generate the pipeline here. I'm going to directly going to instruct the tool to deploy the artifacts. So I'm just going to deploy the cloud formation command here. 
it took me like three minutes for the completion and uh, as you could see here the application that has been running in windows server 2012 has been migrated or containerized to 2019 to amazon ecs very quickly with the help of aws app to container with a set of few commands that's how very quickly you can work with aws app to container with this i would like to take thank you for your time and now it's your turn to try aws app to container thank you